can you just go ahead and start out with your name, your title, your existing role right now, what you do, and then what um, gets you like really excited about the day? Sure, awesome. Um, my name is Teresa Mascri. I'm a labor doula, a postpartum doula, and a childbirth educator. Uh, and then five years ago, I joined the faculty at Kappa, and now I train labor doulas, postpartum doulas, and childbirth educators. So that's really exciting for me. Uh, the whole birth world just gets me really excited. I could probably talk about anything birth related all day, every day. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a little bit about where I am and um, how I got to this field, I guess. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So like before educating people with like their bodies as it's preparing for a child, um, you were an educator, right? I was. So my background is in early childhood education. I actually worked in daycare for a couple of years before I had my own children. Um, and it was there that I actually realized that um, I have a passion for teaching. Um, it was a really difficult journey for me. I'm, I don't learn in a traditional sense. So school was really difficult for me, elementary school, high school. I actually swore that I was never going to do any more school when I graduated high school. Um, but my husband, then boyfriend, um, convinced me that I should go and do something uh, in case, you know, I ever had to go to work or anything like that if he got injured or whatnot. So I decided to do early childhood education because I love babies. So it just kind of made sense. But that's where I realized that's how my brain learns. Everything we did there was learning through play, learning through activities, finding different ways of teaching something that we take for granted. And this light bulb went on in my head and I thought, okay, I'm not dumb. I actually just learned differently than other people. And I really grasped onto that and developed a passion for making sure other people knew that as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where my origins started. Uh, but then I had babies and I became a stay-at-home mom for 12 years. And I thought that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life um, until I was done having babies. And I thought I never have a reason to be around childbirth anymore. And so that's when I started looking into my next career in life, which became, um, you know, helping people through their labor and birth processes. Yeah. So that, no, that's awesome. I love that story arc because what I see in that is a continuation of education, uh, just like as it grows with you, right. Mm. Um, into your clientele. So like, as you're working with adults now that you're educating, uh, about their own body and what's happening to it and how to kind of navigate that, uh, how do you find teaching in that space based on just everything you've learned about yourself, but then also within like the industry? Yeah, so um, I, I was really excited to be able to teach adults, partially because as a labor doula, I realized I can only touch so many families as one person. So moving into the education field helped me reach more people. Yeah, so like, just tell, like, tell me about your journey as you've kind of transitioned from educating young people and even learning how like you learn to educating adults about their own bodies. Like how has that transition been for you? What have you brought with you? Um, I discovered that I wanted to teach adults after one of my experiences in prenatal. I was the support person for my foster sister and we attended prenatal classes together and I was bored to tears. It was eight weeks of pure torture every week, just going. The educator was very um, monotone and was not very excited about the content. It kind of felt like she was reading from a textbook a lot, even though she was very clearly very knowledgeable. Um, and I remember that was the first time I said, I could do this better. <laughs> like I, I could do this better. And then I thought someday when my kids are older, I want to teach prenatal classes because I know I can do this better. And this information is important. So when I started teaching adults, I really had to reconcile. I was able to bring some of that creative side that I used to do with the kids uh, while still keeping the content mature and not feeling kiddish when I'm teaching adults. Um, so those skills, I really feel like everything in my life has kind of built on top of each other to prepare me for what I'm doing right now. Um, and I, I love the opportunity of bringing those hands-on activities into my classroom because 
Uh, we know that adults, children as well, but we know that adults learn better when they are a part of their learning process. So me standing up there and lecturing, while it is necessary at some points, most of the time we can change how we teach, put it into our students' hands, and they're going to retain a lot more of it. My mantra since I started training has pretty much become, if the information is important, then it is our job as educators to make it memorable. And so I kind of, when I look at content, that's the first thing I look at is what are the most important things that my students need to know? How am I going to make sure that that stands out and that they're going to remember it? Um, and that's why I, I spend a lot of my time trying to find creative ways of doing that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I know that you are someone who's like really considering the, the learner's journey and how they essentially like grow, how they connect and how they remember. I really love that you said that. Um, so like you're incorporating what I can imagine to be like visual tactics and then auditory tactics, um, as well as like tactile, right? Um, so can you tell me about your experience, essentially like teaching, like the whole journey um, prior to the vibe board, just like, what were you doing? How did it work? Yeah, so this is actually my classroom. I, I have the benefit of teaching out of my house. I've renovated my dining room and living room. And I would be able to have either five couples when I'm teaching prenatal, or usually I try to have about six or seven uh, students if they're training to be doulas or, or childbirth educators in this room. And a lot of my teaching strategies were physical tactile strategies. So um, I would have an activity where they would have to pull something out of a box and it would represent something, or they would you know, pull out uh, like a baby onesie and it has something written on it, and then they would have to pin it to the clothesline. And in the end, we'd have a whole list of things to help us remember what can help reduce, reduce sudden infant death syndrome. Um, you know, so a lot of that was hands-on, and, and that's one of the feedback that I get about my class that people love is all the hands-on activities. Um, so there's a lot of materials. I usually have a table set up along the back, and it's just full of supplies that I need for that training. Um, but it's it's good and it's fun and I like to create that. I get a big thrill out of creating these things myself with my hands. Um, yeah, so that's basically what my classes used to look like. Um, all in here, we'd still get up and move around as well. That's always really important to me, but there was always something in their hands that they were working with to kind of build onto their learning journey. Totally. And then there's like COVID and we're like, you know, conscious of touching and bodies being close to each other and you know, like who came in with what and like you're dealing with moms who are nervous about like the baby can't get sick, you know, so That's right. um, yeah, so it's like a really specific niche that you're in. So like how, how did you make your pivot? Like, where did you go first? Did you go to Vibe right away? Did you like try other products first? What was that journey for you? Yeah, so I'm sure I'm not the first person to say, you know, in my field of work, because it's so intimate and because it is hands-on and we're doing positions and we're doing things like that I, I can't be the first one to say that I did not think online was going to work I was like you can't do this online it has to be in person um, but the pandemic has just kind of forced us all to make that pivot and so I very quickly got familiar with zoom but then my next challenge was how do I make this information memorable how do I make it creative how do I still make it hands-on even though I can't physically ship them everything that they that I would normally do. It doesn't make sense to ship them things that I would normally do in their hands. So how do I make this transition? So I explored a lot of creative platforms, uh, went through a lot of iterations and how I wanted to do things. I used all the features that I could on Zoom with annotation and stuff like that. Um, but there was still something a little bit lacking and that was, um, that I always had to send them to multiple different platforms, it seemed, because there wasn't one platform that did everything that I wanted it to do. So I was using a little bit here and a little bit there, and it just, it didn't seem to flow as well as I, as I really wanted it to. And when the pandemic started to lighten up and people were able, especially in my area, when people were allowed to start teaching in person again, um, I didn't want to overcrowd my room. So I don't want to have five couples in here anymore because I want people to feel comfortable. I don't want to have six, you know, students in here for trainings. You know, I'm trying to keep it to two or three. But because I was teaching online, I also had the opportunity to teach around the world. 
Um, I've had students from the US, but I've also had students from Belgium join my training and I've been able to train that. So when we went back in person, I didn't wanna lose the contact that I've been able to have and the experiences I've been able to have with students around the world. So I looked into the hybrid model and I don't know about where everybody else is living, but here in Ontario, hybrid is like a bad word, right? The school system was not um, well received when they went to hybrid, parents were complaining. And the biggest concern that people have with hybrid classes is that you cannot teach to both online and in person, you can't teach to them the same way. And I really challenged that thinking. Um, and the way that I challenged that thinking was to look into a smart board, which eventually would be my, my vibe board. Um, because to me, the big difference is, I think I had two hurdles to overcome. One, you want everyone to feel like they're in the same classroom, even if they're tuning in online. What I love about the vibe board is it's, it's a big board. When I split the screen and I have my, my Zoom up, the characters, the faces are very large on the board. And I have a camera showing the people who are here in person as well. So all of a sudden it doesn't feel so odd because you know I've got a microphone set up and a speaker so that everyone can hear each other at any given time. And we're able to you know talk together. So all of a sudden that kind of took that, you know, how do you teach, how do you teach them uh, all in the same? And then the second hurdle I had to overcome was activities, which is my niche. <laughs> That's what I do. How do I create an activity that my online people and my in-person people can interact with on the same time? And that's where the vibe board became absolutely crucial. Uh, without the vibe board, my in-person students would have to bring a laptop with them to work on the activities. And that was not okay for me. You don't come to an in-person class to pull out your laptop and do work on your laptop unless you're taking notes, right? So being able to create those activities and have them interact with it together was was really to me the, the clinch point like once I had that then I could go ahead and start with the hybrid classes yeah so like as an educator how did you feel your students received the because I, I know I can hear your excitement with the product <laughs> right like I'm like it worked <laughs> like I'm doing this um but like your students like did they feel the same level of excitement where they like yeah this really connects I'm like retaining knowledge I feel like I'm I'm really getting the full experience like what was it for them? Um, I was definitely nervous the first training that I did hybrid because in my mind, it was going to be great. In <laughs> reality, I didn't know what, how it was going to turn out. Uh, but I'm super pleased to report that it worked exactly as I had anticipated in my brain and the evaluations afterwards. And I, I specifically asked questions about how did you feel about the hybrid model? Did you feel like you were connected? And that was the biggest comment that people gave is how much, how surprised they were with how homey and how close the training felt, even though, you know, we were, we were online. I like it more than when I just did my online trainings, because when I was just teaching online, I was literally sitting in front of a camera like this and I would stand up and move if I had to. But with these trainings, I've got like my big camera on the wall and they can see the board and me and I zoom it in when I'm talking or I can change position. It just feels a lot more engaging than, I mean, everyone does this for, yeah, their, no, totally. for their meetings, right? Yeah, so this is like what we different. know. We're all in our, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, my trainings are 18 hours long in two days. So they're very long Yeah, this long can't training. work for 18 hours. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so it was really exciting to be able to test drive that and then to have it be a really big success. And honestly, I can't stop talking about it now. I, I'm sure that. people get annoyed with how much I talk about um, how much Vibe has enabled me to be proud of these hybrid classes. No, that's awesome because when it works, right? Like why not celebrate it? So right. would you want to show us like a little preview into like how you normally vibe? Yeah, for sure. So when I'm teaching, I often have like this mode in, but I can also zoom in on me and stuff like that if I needed to. Um, so there's a couple, uh, if you're okay, I want to go through a couple of boards because I'm proud of them. Is that all right? I love it. Do, do everything. <laughs> um, so I think one of the basic functions of any interactive whiteboard is the fact that you can whiteboard and you can brainstorm with it. 
Um, so, you know, just having a fun background is good. And what I would do is I would have everyone brainstorm. This one is for topics to teach in uh, childbirth education classes. And so I would have them type in their brainstorming session. But then when I'm done, I actually take it one step further. And then I'll just delete this box that I had there. And now we're going to take those topics and we're going to organize them into the three weeks right away. So, okay, you wanted this topic, let's slide it over here. Let's slide it over here. Instead of just staying with a brainstorming session and not being able to do anything with it, this way I can actually seamlessly, you know, get to that next step, which is now we need to organize all of those thoughts into the weeks. That's just a really simple thing um, that I can do. Or you can even come up with templates where you can this is a A to Z brainstorming session. So we're coming up with things that we can do as doulas that go along with each letter of the alphabet. Everyone can kind of write them in in an organized fashion. Um, this is something I would normally have done on a flip chart paper, but this means that my online students and my in-person students can write you know, their suggestions right on the same board. So I love that one. Um, and then this is an activity that I just created for the training this weekend, and it's just like a word scramble. So they're going to work together in a fun way to kind of come up with, you know, what the topic is that we're talking about under communication. Um, I find sometimes topics can be really heavy, you know, like these are seven really specific styles of communication and it can be overwhelming. So by getting to work on something, come up with that title, once they do it, we unpack it. And then I kind of like reveal the next one and we're gonna unscramble this one together. Um, and then we'll unpack that title. It's just, it's a way to get them re-engaged at, at the end of each big chunk, right? As opposed to just talking and talking and talking. So this is using the whiteboard feature, but using it for more than just brainstorming. Um, this, the next feature that I really like is just being able to move things around. Um, so this is a sorting activity. We actually do it as I'm teaching when I'm talking about the phases and stages of labor. So early active transition and pushing. And then, um, you know, if we're doing, if I'm doing it with doulas, then I have them all work on it together where they're just going to take the categories and move them into, you know, what phase or stage it's in. Um, and we would do that activity kind of together, which I think is um, fun <laughs> myself. Like, like, it's just kind of fun to know that you are getting things in the right order. We go through it and we unpack it together. Um, you might have a discussion with one of your teammates saying, I don't think it's there. I think it belongs here. And it yeah. creates a dialogue and it a creates that interactive. With it. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Because I encourage my students, as long as there's not too much background noise at their house, I encourage them to leave themselves unmuted because I want that dialogue to happen. That's what would happen in person. In person, we would all be chattering. Uh, but the problem with online teaching is that we always say, mute yourselves until you wanna talk because we don't want the background noise. So this way they have a chance to kind of collaborate and work together. So this is just moving things around. Keeping with that same theme, I created a puzzle um, and what they would do is they would work on the puzzle together and trying to complete it. And once you have it completed, it actually says something. Oh, that's not what goes, that's where that goes. Um, and so I asked them to read out what the message says. Now, this is a fun activity because once they start working on it together, they realize there are a few pieces missing. There are some few key pieces missing to the, to the puzzle. And then everyone says, oh, no, we don't have all the pieces. And I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, yeah. And then I'm like, um, well, can you read it? Like, do you have enough there to read it? And they're like, no. And then I come over here and I delete this box. And I say, well, would it help if I gave you all the pieces? And then when they put all the pieces in, the puzzle says informed consent is only possible when all the pieces of information are given. Just kind of reinforcing that idea that, you know, um, half a puzzle isn't good enough. Half the information also isn't good enough. We need to make sure that mm -hmm. our families get all the information that they need. That's so good. Can I ask what the completed image? <laughs> I guess I can oh. see my brain like trying to figure it out. I'm like, what is it? It's it's really just sticky notes with question marks. Oh, so cool. Okay. <laughs> and then in the middle, in the middle, it says, "I don't have a completed one in front of me. Otherwise, I would totally show you." <laughs> no, I bet I can it send must... you the picture later. Yeah. No, totally. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, how this, do you go about customizing all the screens that we're seeing? Do you make them yourself? I do um, make the them board? myself. So this was a pain in the butt to make, if I'm being honest. I made this in uh, Photoshop and then I had to take it each piece individually. So all of these pieces are individual images. They don't snap to grid. So it's not snapping into position, but I can you know, basically overlay it so that it's, it fits there nicely. Um, I recreated this game. I created it the first time in Explain Everything. I don't know if you know that platform. Mm -hmm. I created it there. And then I recreated it in Jamboard when I discovered Jamboard. And then when I discovered Vibe, I'm like, no, no, no. We're going to have this all in one place. Because when I do my trainings, I literally just, I add pages. I add different canvases and I can just slide through them as I need. And that, yeah. I love that, fe that feature. I don't have to send them a new link. I basically yes. send them a link on the morning of the training. And then I say, keep this on all day. And then I'm like, yeah. okay, go to, go to board number five now. Okay, go to board number six now. And then we work through those activities as we go. This is just a really basic one. So I used to have um, a flower that I would, um, flower that I created that looks exactly like this. And this is just a true or false activity. So it's a review activity. So when we're talking about what doulas can or can't do, like what's inside their scope of practice. So I would have them read one of the petals. So a doula can suggest comfort measures. Is that true or false? They would say true. And then you could pluck it and it says that it's true. Oh, then, that's and, fun. Yeah. And then another one might be um, a doula can diagnose mothers and babies conditions. That would be false. No. So you could just pluck it and then it says false. So again, just a fun way to review the content. So that it sticks. Without just reading it, right? Because if I just say, can a mother do this? No. Can a, can a doula do this? No. Can a doula do this? Yes. Like that's just so boring. Mm -hmm. This, in, because they have to get up or they have to, at least on their computer, move it around, have fun with it. So those are kind of my moving activities. Oh, I got one more actually. Oh, I was going to show you. So normally at the end of, um, on the first night of my pre, uh, the childbirth educator training that I do, they have to pick a topic and they get to teach it the next day at class. So normally I have these keychains, like physical keychains, and they, they pick a keychain and then their topic is on it. So I love that so much. I just decided to recreate a digital one. So I, I let them pick a key in this one. So their topic would be C-sections. Or if somebody picked this key, their topic would be postpartum moods. So, I mean, I, did I need to create one for that? No, but again, I like the option of them picking things when the school system started getting uh, smart boards, like the brand name smart boards into the school systems, I remember saying someday I want an excuse to own a smart board, but I knew I didn't want one with the projector in the ceiling, which is what all the schools have around here. Yeah. But the projectors I found so limiting and I just, I just, I didn't want that. Um, and when I started doing my research about these types of smart boards that look more like a flat screen TV, mm -hmm. um, it was, the vibe was the only one that had everything that I wanted it to do. A lot of them were just whiteboards. I'm like, well, that's, I can use flip chart paper if it's just a whiteboard. Um, but being able to move things around and being able to bring in images. And one of the big selling features for me um, is the infinity screen and being able to move things over so that I can now work over here if I need to. I think yeah. that's brilliant. Like to me, why has nobody else done this yet? <laughs> Yeah. Like it is, it is so great, especially for the brainstorming. Absolutely. Do you ever use your split screen? All the time. So especially for trainings, when I'm, if we're going to this, to the vibe app, then I always split screen and I have my zoom on the other side so that ah. the people in person can still see all the participants. Love that. Um, so that's normally where I would use the split screen, but I've even done it. I mean, we use the we use this like for Netflix a lot with my family. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. We'd even done split screen for that before when they wanted to watch something, but I, I was doing something that I, or was playing with something on this side. Um, so we've done it for that too. Oh, that's so fun. Well, thank you so much for showing us like how you use the board and, and just like all the ways that you are working it and like making it serve you in the ways that it needs to, right? Uh, I yeah. can uh, just like imagine the Calgary students are engaging this and like learning with it and getting excited with it because I got excited. <laughs> I really like the pedal, like the pedal pull out yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also <laughs> like the eraser tool. 
the way that yes. you're using it. I think that's a really great way to use it as well. I think you may have given some educators some really great ideas about like how to use your vibe boards. And I'm hoping that like the next few that come on, I will give you some really good ideas too. I hope so. And I, like I said, I, I feel like I'm talking a lot about the vibe board to people lately because I just want to get it out there and I want people to really challenge the way that they're teaching uh, online, especially hybrid, but also online um, and just challenge themselves to do a little bit more. Yeah. Cause you can make online personal. Yes. And you have, so <laughs> I hope you are feeling very proud. I'm so <laughs> glad that we got to like do this and to connect and to have this uh, time for you to share your vibe experience and how you vibe um, just with everyone here. So is there anything you want to make sure that they hear before you like head out? So my training program where I train labor doulas and postpartum doulas, that company is called Trust Prenatal Postpartum Doula Training. Um, but you can just find it at trustyourjourney.ca. Uh, and that's where all the information is about anyone who's thinking about exploring that, that route. Uh, and it's a really rewarding field. Uh, when I support families with, as a labor doula or teaching prenatal classes, that company is called mybabybump.ca. Um, and I'm teaching my prenatal classes online using the smart board as well. I have another class tomorrow night. So it's been just really great to play around with the vibe and using it to my, to its fullest potential for my purposes. Absolutely. And just, you know, as you're kind of doing this, are you currently accepting students right now? I am. I Ooh, am. Ooh, and you're doing so, it globally because <laughs> I'm actually training this weekend. I'm training postpartum doulas this weekend. Well, that's super exciting. So, you people, if you're looking for a doula, look no further. Just click one of the links in our description. Thank you so much, Teresa. This has been such a joy. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too.